Hello, big boys and gals, and welcome back. We are on stage 9, basic line styles and modifying modifiers, the biggest features of freestyle that made freestyle called freestyle in the first place. Well, that's kind of a mouthful. This stage is about the test of endurance. It will be a long one. How about we dive into it? Because we can, we have three cans for our first example. All the line sets are taken care of, each with a number to show what layer object it should be for, and they each have a nice name too. It's kind of like getting all your weapons and tools organized for a long journey. Let's activate the first line set, which is Basic 3. Why Basic 3? Because we'll be looking at three basic line styles, color, alpha, and line thickness. Now we examine the model. This is a basic paint can model with the edge marks done. All edge type selections are also ready for render. Let's render it now. We have basic black lines. Black is too strong for this render, so how about other colors? Here we have a base color. To change it, it's similar to changing the color for other parts of Blender. And now we can sample the color from the can and make it darker. Render? Yeah, that's a bit nicer now. But what if we have objects with many material colors and want to get them into their darker tones? then we need to use alpha with a dark color. We have a transparency of one, which is completely opaque lines. To get it to be semi-transparent and showing material colors, we slide the alpha down a little bit, maybe 0.8. Done, let's see how that looks. The lines blend a little better with the material. Now let's lower it to even further, about 0.4. Now they look soft and deep. And it looks like we need some thicker lines. To do that, we need to go to the thickness tab. It's three pixels thick at 100% render resolution, but since we're rendering at 50%, the lines are rendered at 1.5 pixels. How about we make it three pixels now by dialing that up to six? And test. Look at those nice thick lines. We can see a few more options here. Default is a line on top of the geometry, which is center. We can also shift the line inside or outside or even relative. These options only shift the line surrounding the object. So basically, silhouette, border, contour, and external contour edge types will affect them. But to get it working, you must have chaining enabled, and with chaining, plane, and also same object activated. Those are sort of invisible rules that are not quite yet documented in the wiki. Inside and outside is very self-explanatory. So we'll look at what relative does. The tooltips say that 1 is similar to outside, 0 is the same to inside. Homework. Try to shift the lines inside or outside, and try the relative option too. If you're going to do that, pause it and have some fun. You have my thumbs up. Okay, with that, we're done with the basics. Let's dive a little deeper. And that's the second time I've said dive in this stage. So how deep does it go? Well, we are now entering the abyss of the line style modifiers. For the second example, we need to change to another camera and layer. Click, giddy, click, giddy, click, giddy, click. Okay, here we have a box on a plane, which is completely edge marked. In this first part, we'll introduce you to a long stroke modifiers for color, alpha, and thickness. To understand the modifiers, think of them as similar to object modifiers. We can change color along the stroke by adding a long stroke modifier. But I have done it for us. To activate it, let's click this camera button. The modifier has blend modes and color selection, sort of like a color ramp. The color ramp works a little differently here. The left side is the start of the line, and the right side is the end, or vice versa. They are either end of a line chain. Also, a long stroke modifier depends heavily on line chaining. It is a line chaining option that provides it with the start and end of a line. F12. Here we can see each stroke is colored with colors from the color ramp. We'll let you play with that. Alpha's a long stroke modifier. Instead of changing the alpha on all lengths of the line, this modifier will change alpha along the stroke. Here we use curve to set alpha. Top means alpha 1 and bottom means alpha 0 or fully transparent. As with all along stroke modifiers, this one also depends on chaining. So the drawing will be a little weird. Depending on the curve set, this modifier can be quite useful. 
let's move to the next modifier, Thickness a long stroke modifier. Among a long stroke modifiers, this is the most useful. It can produce very good hand-drawn and organic-like line thicknesses. In this example, we are using a linear setting of 0.5 as minimum line width and 5 as maximum line width. If we are using a curve, we can make the start and end of the line thinner, which is more similar to brush strokes. With that, we are done with the along stroke modifiers. The next challenge is modifiers with distance. Back to the color tab. Activate color distance from object modifier. This will use an object as a reference point. In this example, our target object is the blue box. The color ramp's leftmost color will be the closest to the box and the right side will be the furthermost. To get it working, we need to set minimum distance, which is the offset where the color starts to change from the object. Then we need to change the maximum distance. It is counted as the offset from the minimum distance. We can always use this handy little button to fill range by selection. And yes, we need to select the object to use for this function but often we still need to put our own touch on it to call it ours. Nice, isn't it? You could make your own Tron world with this alone. Moving on to the next modifier. This is colors distance from camera modifier. This has a color ramp too. Leftmost of the color ramp is the closest to the camera and rightmost is the furthest from the camera. We also have a min max distance, same as the previous example. With the color ramp, we can make this weird effect. Also, it is animatable. Yeah, I made that up. Go ahead and try it. The possibilities are endless. Let's change to the alpha tab. The alpha's distance from object modifier. This will change the object alpha based on the object set here. We also have min and max range, which I guess you know how they work already. How about we just render it? Nice. Now we can fade the lines into nothingness. Moving on to the next modifier in this tab, the alpha's distance from camera modifier. As the name states, we'll use the camera distance from the object as alpha factor. The curve means on the left side closest to the camera and the right side furthest from the camera. Bottom is alpha zero and top is alpha one or fully opaque. This curve that I set means that at the set distance from the camera, the alpha will go up then vanish. Let's see it for real. Huh, kind of a tilt shift effect, nice. End to the thickness tab. Now we play with line thickness distance from object modifier. This modifier is very cool and can solve many line problems, especially for NPR architectural visualization. Judging by the name, we know how this works already. The only extra part is the min and max thickness. With the invert button, we can make the line fade to a minimum thickness farther away from the object. The last distance modifier is the thickness's distance from camera modifier. Here I use a curve with two bumps. Can you see the line thickness change with distance? Well, if you can't see, you need to try it out. And it seems this example is getting overly used. Time for a new one. So we'll change camera to L3 and show objects for layer three. We use these line sets here, and then we'll look at an extra modifier in the line thickness tab. Ah, the calligraphy modifier. If you're into calligraphy, this is the modifier for you. It works just like a calligraphy pen. Wait, you don't know what a calligraphy pen looks like? Stop the show. Okay, pause the video, Google it. No, seriously, go for it. So a calligraphy pen has a flat tip, and if you put it horizontally on paper, that would be our zero angle reference. All right, enough, let's just render it. The blue colored line on the left is at a 60 degree angle. At 60 degrees here, the direction is at its full width. At 150 degrees, it's at its thinnest. The one on the right, the red colored one, is at a zero degree angle. At zero degrees, it has full thickness, and at 90 degrees, it is thin. Like any other modifiers on the thickness tab, we have min and max thickness. With this, we could do all sorts of calligraphy animations. So get creative. We can also make professional presentation graphics with Freestyle. On layer four, we have a 3D bar chart. This is a mesh with three materials, and as you see here, we have red diffuse material with green specular, blue diffuse with red specular, and green diffuse with blue specular. We'll use them to show the line style material modifier and how they work. 
with all modifiers off, this is how it looks. The first material modifier we'll look at is for line color. By default, it is set to diffuse, which means no difference with or without the modifier. But when we change it to diffuse red, a color ramp appears. What does the color ramp do? Well, what does diffuse red mean? In doubt, press F12. So you can see only the red material has yellow lines. The left side of the color ramp means the least of what we specify as the controlling factor. So in our case, the least red diffuse will be black. Where there is full red, that is a value of 1.0 of red, the line color will shift to the rightmost portion of the color ramp. It is just that simple. This is useful when we want to change the color or highlight a certain material. One minion down. The second material modifier is in the alpha tab. In the alpha tab, of course, means the modifier will change the alpha or opacity of the line. Here we have a curve to control the alpha and the alpha isn't all zero. It starts from 0.25 and goes to 1.0. The controlling factor is specular blue, which is on the green material. Let's see how it renders. Only the green material with the blue specular has dark lines and the rest are muted with 0.25 alpha. Two minions down. And now the third material modifier, the thickness modifier. Time to change line thickness. We'll use diffuse blue as the controlling factor. The minimum line width is two and the max is at five. When the diffuse material is blue, the line will be five pixels at 100% size. Let's see it for real. The blue material has black lines. And if we flip the curve around, we'll have the reverse. The blue material will have the thin lines and the rest will have the thick lines. Boom, three minions down, and now we have a bonus round. Red alert, red alert. We have an unexpected enemy in the horizon to the battle station. Random encounter, giant boss approaching. Okay, this is exclusive to color, alpha, and thickness modifiers. The influence slider is the ultimate boss, which we have seen, but we have not yet ventured to touch. Now it is upset and challenging us to an explanation battle. We have studied all the folklore, so this should be easy. No, okay, it's hard. It's not documented in the Blender Wiki, nor in Wikipedia. Panic mode, panic mode, let's go to the code. Yes, the Blender code. There are two places where the equations, or rather algorithms, reside. Location one is here, and location two is here. Influence on the code is called FAC, or FAC, for factor. FACM is one minus influence. They are quite complex and aren't for mastering within a day. To help you understand them, we have made these. You can find these as a PDF in the stage nine folder, but be sure to master the basic ones like mix, add, multiply, overlay, and screen. And one more thing, influence equations for color are different from alpha and thickness. The nice thing is blend modes for alpha and thickness are easy to understand compared to the color blend modes. So be sure to master them too. With that, we have beaten up the most furious big boss in this course. Arr. To celebrate, let's edge something fun. We're going to edge this sci-fi three-way hallway. With the equipped knowledge from previous stages, you'll be introduced to a workflow unique for edge rendering. Let's set up Blender to prepare to handle the scene. The hallway scene is on layer five, and we also need to change camera. We'll use line set five, hallway start. Before we go directly into F12ing this, we'll need some planning. What kind of edges do we want to select and why do we need to select them? What can we see here? We see three hallways going into the distance. Some sort of distance modifier will be applied later. When distance is great, distance from anything modifier will always pop up. That's a tip for you. To find the edge types you're going to use, let's tab into edit mode for each model. First, we select the entrance, the entrance has open edges, which means we need border edge type. It also has sharp corners at the top, which means crease. Moving to another model, the decors, six of them. To edge them, we need silhouette and border as the bottom of the model is open. To edge the green lines, which is another material, we need material boundary. Now the hallways. It needs material boundary and crease also. And green edges, that means edge mark. And that is how we find which edge types to use. But that's not all. Remember that I mentioned we need depth? Well, why not measure the distance we need? Press seven and home. Now we'll use the ruler protractor tools. Hold control and LMB at the camera and drag to the end of the hallway. 
we have roughly 300 meters. But can the camera see that far? I don't think so, since we have a 250 meter view. So the true distance we need to set is 250 meters. Let's keep 250 in our buffer memory. Now for the line style, stroke tab. Here we only need to enable chaining and same object. Color tab. We change the color to orange, 30% or so from total black, which will produce some sort of light brown color. The alpha tab. We want the line color to blend with the material a little bit, so we'll set the alpha to around 0.6. And the thickness tab. The base thickness of three is okay. We have done much, and now a test render. Oh, look at that nice clump of brown in the distance. What an ugly mess. Good thing we came prepared. The patch of brown happens because the lines get too close to each other from the camera view with distance. This is also known as screen space line density. To solve this problem, we need to make the lines thinner with distance. The modifier to get that done, of course, distance with camera. Let's get it. Since perspective is linear, we can't use linear to solve the line thickness. You can try it yourself if you want to see it. Well, since I'm a freestyle master, I'll go with this solution. That is a curve starting with a high thickness from the left and curved down to zero going to the right. We also need to fill the distance. Minimum is zero and max at, check your buffer, 250 meters. Plus remember to change the minimum and maximum thickness. Here I know that the minimum at zero is good, as I know that we want the lines to disappear at 250 meters from the camera. Max thickness at five because three is just a little too thin for my comfort. F12 time. Well now those are just beautiful lines, wonderful and perfect. Our proposed finished line set and line style also include for you to compare your result with my result. Don't aim for a perfect match, just aim for visual clarity. With that, we are at the end of the stage. Boy, that was long and dense. To sum it up, watch the video again. To really grasp it, you'll probably need to watch it a couple times anyway. All right, enough said, I need a beer. Bye-bye. <laughs>